Lots of reaction coming in overnight to that emotional appearance in the White House briefing room from Chief of Staff John Kelly. The former general raw and red-eyed as he defended the president, attacked his critics, and remembered the death of his own son on the battlefield. Chief White House correspondent John Carl starts us off. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. White House officials say it was entirely General Kelly's decision to speak out on this and that he is furious about how the controversy has unfolded. With his emotional appearance in the White House briefing room, Chief of Staff John Kelly, himself a Gold Star father, sought to put an end to the controversy sparked by comments made by the president earlier this week. There's no perfect way to make that phone call. Uh, when I took this job uh, and talked to President uh, uh, Trump about how to do it, my first recommendation was he not do it. Uh, because it's not the phone call that parents, family members are looking forward to. Kelly's son, Robert, was killed in Afghanistan in 2010. He asked me about pre pre previous presidents, and I said, I can tell you that President Obama, who uh, was my commander-in-chief when I was on active duty, uh, did not call my family. That was not a criticism. That was just to simply say, I don't believe President Obama called. That's not a negative thing. Describing his own experience with loss, Kelly said he counseled the president on what to say. And he said to me, what do I say? Uh, I said to him, sir, there's nothing you can do to lighten the burden on these families. But let me tell you what I tell them. And what, let me tell you what my best friend, Joe Dunford, told me, because he was my casualty officer. He said, Kel, um, he was doing exactly what he wanted to do when he was killed. He knew what he was getting into by joining the, that 1%. That's what the president tried to say to, a fam to four families the other day. When president Trump told the widow of Sergeant La David Johnson that her husband knew what he was signing up for, Kelly said he was echoing the words he was told about his son. The enlist, and he was where he wanted to be exactly where he wanted to be with exactly the people he wanted to be with when his life was taken. That was the message. As for the congresswoman who was with Sergeant Johnson's widow when she received the call from the president and said it was disrespectful. It stuns me that a member of Congress would have listened in on that conversation. Absolutely stuns me. And I thought at least that was sacred. And the brother of Staff Sergeant Dustin Wright, one of the four soldiers killed in Niger, says he doesn't want his brother's death to be politicized. Nothing good is coming out of talking about President Trump in a phone call or you know, what letters have been sent or anything else. There are legacies that need to be carried on. There are sons and daughters without fathers, there are wives without husbands, and we want to focus on helping them. Overnight, the president weighed in on this yet again, tweeting, quote, the fake news is going crazy with wacky Congresswoman Wilson, who secretly, who was secretly on a very personal call and gave a total lie on content. By the way, uh, the Congresswoman, Congresswoman Wilson, is a close family friend of the Johnsons. She heard that telephone call because she was riding in the car with Sergeant Johnson's widow when the call came in. George? Okay, John Carl, thanks very much. We're going to bring in our Chief Global Affairs anchor, Martha Redditch, who's in Tokyo this morning. And Martha Redditch, you've covered General Kelly for a long time. You know him well. Simply extraordinary that he would come to the briefing room and open up about his own personal loss in that way. George, I, I was very, very surprised by that. General Kelly has been so private about his son, his staff, and General Kelly himself have asked reporters, have asked me in the past not to bring up the death of his son when we have interviewed him. So it was very surprising, but it shows you how profoundly he feels about this, how profoundly protective of President Trump he is being. And of course, he was in the room with him. George, as you know, I know many Gold Star families, they all grieve differently. They all grieve privately or publicly, but it is all a unique experience that, that really none of us can understand. Certainly, and, and Martha, he also just expressed that real gulf he feels between what he called the 1%, those who serve in the military and the rest of the country. 
Yeah, I, you know, it struck me that part of him was just still talking about that as a Marine Corps general, about the sacrifice and service. And you know, George, I've been out here with the troops the last couple of days and the sailors out on a carrier. They do not like any of this politicized. They do not like to talk about things like this. But interestingly enough, when I ask one young pilot an F-35 pilot, whether he feared that war might break out on the Korean Peninsula. He said, ma'am, that's what we signed up for. George. Okay, Martha Raddatz, thanks very much.